Secretary of the Air Force Heather Wilson recently released a new science and technology strategy to strengthen Air Force science and technology for 2030 and beyond. Why should you care? If you're in the Air Force, this is the strategy to develop cool capabilities that'll keep you relevant in the future. If you're not in the Air Force, you might just pay taxes and wonder where your money's going. The report is 32 pages of strategic sounding words and long sentences. In case you haven't read it all, here's a summary in plain English. Background. The U.S. spent the past two decades in a war on terror, fighting with enemies who don't put up much of a technological challenge. We focused our development on tackling near-term problems, and evolutionary improvements were enough to stay ahead. Now, competitors like China and Russia are posing a bigger threat to U.S. security as they rapidly grow their military forces. Everyone can get their hands on the latest technology these days, so they're able to catch up quickly. For the Air Force to stay ahead, the science and technology strategy uses a lot of words to basically say, we need to go full Daft Punk, being harder, better, faster, stronger than our adversaries everywhere you can imagine. The document's vision statement calls for an Air Force that dominates time, space, and complexity in future conflict across all operating domains to project power and defend the homeland. Time means we can take action faster than our adversaries. Space here is not just referring to outer space. We need to have reach everywhere to find out what's going on and do military things. And harnessing complexity means we can overwhelm and confuse our adversaries while keeping them from doing the same to us. All of that across all operating domains. So how will we get there? The strategy lays out three main objectives. The first is to develop and deliver transformational strategic capabilities. The strategy says Air Force science and technology should be divided into two portfolios. An enduring component, which is basically what we have today, focused on keeping the US a global air and space power. And the other piece will be a transformational component that focuses on delivering strategic new capabilities. Science and technology investments are currently funded and managed using an organizational structure that's aligned with technical disciplines. Under the new strategy, the Air Force will dedicate a fraction of its overall science and technology budget to pursue transformational developments. Their initial target is 20% of the overall budget, and this new transformational component will be managed separately from the existing discipline-oriented structure. The transformational component will focus on five strategic capabilities including global persistent awareness, so we always know what's going on, resilient information sharing, making sure our units can always communicate and navigate without being disrupted, rapid effective decision making, which is using automation and artificial intelligence to help separate what's important from what's not so we can make decisions and act faster, complexity, unpredictability, and mass. The strategy says our force currently relies on a small number of very expensive assets and we need to back that up with a large number of inexpensive low-end systems too. And the final capability, speed and reach of disruption and lethality. Building weapons that can go anywhere we need them to fast. Things like hypersonics, lasers, and cyber weapons. To develop these capabilities, the transformational component will lead focused research programs called vanguards, which will be limited in time and scope to keep everyone on track and moving fast. It's returning the Air Force to its post-World War II roots of prototyping, experimentation, and innovation. The second big objective of the strategy is to reform the way science and technology is led and managed. When it comes to planning and investment decisions in the Air Force, scientists have traditionally had a pretty weak voice. There isn't a single senior official who's primarily responsible for leading technology development. That role is dispersed across a bunch of offices throughout the Air Force, which makes prioritizing and budgeting development activities a complicated challenge. The heads of major commands are often focused on solving their own near-term problems, so when they outrank their scientific advisors, that leads to long-term scientific proposals being overruled. To solve that problem, the new strategy calls for the appointment of a chief technology officer for the Air Force, somebody that can be a unified voice at the headquarters level, with the centralized authority to guide long-term scientific and technological decisions and prioritize activities. The strategy does acknowledge that creating an Air Force CTO may require approval from Congress, so we'll see how that happens. Objective three, deepen and expand the scientific and technical enterprise. The Air Force needs to maintain a strong internal pool of scientific experts, as well as deepen its external partnerships. This section of the report is basically a to-do list of potential activities to attract more scientific talent to the Air Force, grow and develop the talent we already have, and then retain that talent. It calls for good things like implementing new incentives, encouraging appropriate risk-taking, and pushing authority down to the lowest level. It also talks about strengthening relationships with other government laboratories, universities, industry, and allies. So that's the Air Force's new science and technology strategy in a nutshell. Put 20% of the money towards transformational capabilities, create an Air Force chief technical officer, 
and do more to grow the pool of scientific talent and expand the technical enterprise. One last thing I found interesting, the word transformational appeared 37 times in the report, but various forms of innovation only appeared 24 times. Prepare your bingo sheets, this might be the next buzzword.